Echo, welcome to the show, buddy. What's up, man? Thanks for having me. This is awesome. I have been following you since July 18th, 2018. Do you know why? No, July 7th. That's very specific. July 7th, 2018. July 7th? Yeah, July 7th. <laughs> UFC 226. Was that July 2018? July 7th, 2018. UFC 226. Uh, DC versus Stipe. You did the uh, intro. I remember, I, just, I remember the fight. I didn't know that was the date. Yeah. Well, I was just throwing the date in there just because I, I looked it up. And I obviously didn't just pull that out of my head. Um, but I knew it was about two years. Um, but that's what caused me to follow you in the first place. Um, you did the uh, the intro for the, the preview for the show. And it was incredible. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, who is this guy? And then I started following you, man. And I've been following you ever since. And uh, super impressive, man. Super impressive. That's awesome, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, doing that was like a, a bucket list kind of thing. You know what I mean? It, it was doing that song for UFC was like I had talked to someone over at UFC who had mentioned maybe having me do it. And I was like, yeah, it's never actually going to happen. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Of course. And... Uh, I'm, then he hit me up and he's like, cool, let's let's do it. And I was like, oh, you're serious. Okay, uh, let me see what I can do. And then we ended up making that whole thing. And then they let us get in the octagon and all that kind of shit. And it was awesome. But it was like a dream come true type thing that I never thought would ever actually come to be, especially at that point in my career. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was a great day. Um, so my teammate, Daniel Cormier, uh, one of my, my friends, my brothers, my my teammate from AKA actually knocked out Stipe uh, Miocic in that fight. And so uh, I was at the fight. He, he, he won the championship, the heavyweight championship coming up from light heavyweight. So it was a very memorable night for us at AKA. And uh, yeah, you brought the show in and then and he got the win and, and he became a double champ. So it was fucking awesome, man. And, but but your, your flow was incredible, man. And like, I'm not like a rapper or I mean, obviously, my lifestyle, you, you can look at it, and it's not like a rapper lifestyle, but like I have a lot, I, t I take a lot of inspiration from rappers. And if you look at my career, I've walked out to every single fight to Tupac, Ambitions of a Writer, because when I was coming up in boxing gyms, that's what I listened to. That's what the guys listened to at the gyms that I came up to uh, or came up with in uh, Main Street Gym, Houston, Texas, you know, all these gyms and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, man, like I, I've been a big fan of like uh, hip hop and rap because of my early years and, and motivation, because you know, the thing is, is like a lot of what I liked about it is because a lot of you guys write your own stuff. It's your life. It's your interest is what you actually want to project. It's not other people's script. You know, I think that's real. Yeah. There's something real about that. And I like that. So and you're all over the place, man, you can like take anything you're like doing Marvel, you're doing like in game, you're spoiling in game for me when I'm, <laughs> when I'm watching your in game uh, verse. And then like, uh, you're doing like you're doing all, all kinds of stuff, man. It's incredible. Well, you know, I think there is like a, a big correlation. Like I always thought it was there's a correlation between like these different uh, careers if you look at it you know i feel like and you know forgive me if i'm wrong because i know like i always looked at music especially like hip-hop in general and like skateboarding as very closely related to me as in the sense that it's an individual form of self-expression yeah and uh like an individual form of art you know one's physical obviously and one's more um mental type thing but i i always looked at fighting kind of the same way because i've been a huge fan of i mean i live in i was born and raised in vegas where ufc yeah. you know blossom so that's i've been a big fan a massive fan of ufc since i was you know 10 um so i've always i never got into it uh, like actually fighting myself even though i've wanted to i have a lot of friends that do but uh i always looked at it as kind of the same sort of it's an individual you're pushing yourself. Right. And, you know, I know there's a lot of teams and, and gyms and stuff like that, but at the, at the end of the day, and same thing with like music, you can have like a collective you're in. At the end of the day, it comes down to you. And what are you willing to do? What work are you willing to put in to push yourself and to, to make this thing happen for you? Because nobody else, people can ask you to do it and tell you, but you have to 
put the fucking work in right. on your own. And it's those moments when you're by yourself and, and things like that that really determine whether or not you're going to make it in this business. And I feel like it's a lot of the same correlations go into fighting and it's, it's pushing yourself and things like that. So, you know, I think it's easy to, to relate with people that are in, you know, those certain, like I never really fit into team sport type stuff very much, but when it came to individual stuff, I can totally understand and wrap my head around that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a confusion between uh, team sport and, you know, individual sport being MMA and, and, and I guess, you know, entertainment as far as what you do. Um, you know, we're a team, but we're all working for ourselves. You know what I mean? Like we're in the gym to make ourselves win, to make ourselves better, but we are helping each other as we do that. But our number one goal is to make ourselves win the fight. So it's like, yeah, we are a team, but we're not going out there as a team. And we know that, you know, we're going out there to, to fight somebody individually and it's going to be him and me. And that's what it's going to come down to. And I need to be in shape and I need to be ready. Um, so it's, it's, it's a team sport in the fact that you do need people around you to support you and help you, but they're not helping you in a way of like, let's all go together and win this championship. They're helping you in a way of like, do as I do and, and let's try to compete against each other as we're training so that we can push our levels up and, and, and both get in the best shape possible, which I assume is like uh, entertainment for you as well, rapping and singing, you, you know, you're, you're collaborating with people, but you know, you're, you're, you're elevating each other and, and, and trying to raise each other's bar a little bit as you go. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the, my peers are also my competition in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, right, so right. If, if they're, you know, upping their game, then it's pushing me to, to make myself better. Um, and so it's, it's a healthy competition thing, but it's also, you know, I don't necessarily need you, but you're like having you is, is what, you know, pushes me to, to continue to, you know, at least up my game. It's not like I'm going to do any less, but I, I'm, it's going to light a fire underneath me if I'm watching you do certain things and, you know, collaboration and the way people do different things or, you know, making you think of things a little differently, think outside of the box or whatever it is, is, uh, you know, it's a cool thing. And I mean, I get a lot of people look at battle rap like a sport. I've heard people actually say that I've mm -hmm. never been like a battle rap person. Like I'm a fan of battle rap, but I'm, it's never been my thing. Right. But, in that sense, it's like it is two people setting into, you know, yeah, uh, a, a <laughs> setting to go against each other, which is like actually sport like, I guess, in a, in a way. But yeah. Yeah. So just before we get into uh, to your uh, your rap career, obviously, um, as far as martial arts, did you say you said you didn't do martial arts at all? I did Taekwondo as a kid. That's where I started. Yeah. Yeah. When I was when I was younger, but I. I got pretty heavy into drugs later in, in like uh, oh, my middle school, high school life, uh, sobered up when I was 18. And since then got so heavy into music, I, I haven't really gotten into anything. But I have a lot of friends like, uh, I don't know if you like uh, Johnny Nunez. Yeah. I don't know if you know Johnny Nunez, yeah. but he's a good friend of mine. Uh, you know, Misha, all that. Like, I know a bunch of people that are, that fight and that train and I've wanted to, but I'm like, I'm the type of person, if I do something, I know I'm going to give, I don't do anything unless I know I can give 100%. Right. And I'm obsessive. And yeah. I have an addictive personality. So I'm like, I can't like do one foot in, one foot out of anything. Right. And uh, I have to be two feet in what I'm doing right now. So I just, I can't split up anything. I feel like. Maybe that's wrong, but no, it's, it's kind of where not. I'm at. Dude, that's why I take inspiration from your your post, man. Because like it's so similar to fighting. Because it's what you said. You have to be all in. You know, you have to sacrifice everything, and you do, man. You 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 hustle hard, bro. Like you you are always doing something. Like every single time my my feed refreshes, it's like you're doing something new, something different, something. It's just always you're just always doing it. So it's like it, it's awesome to see. Um, how hard is it to come up? independently like you are you're in vegas right now right yeah how, how, how hard is uh, it to come up independently and try to like build yourself amongst like probably so many other people that are trying to do the same thing but i can't imagine them being as good as you man because you're fantastic thank you man i appreciate it um 
You know, it's funny because I feel like it's another correlation to like fighting because how many people are training to try and fight? You know what yeah. I mean? And how many make it? Uh, I guess with music, it is a little different because, you know, making it in music, especially independent, is incredi- incredibly difficult. Yeah. Um, there, especially from, you know, the ground to to this middle level that I'm currently feel like I'm at, it's so much time and money and effort and goes into it and it has to be like a full-time thing because I'll throw a fucking rock and you can hit somebody who wants to be a rapper or says that they make music you know what i mean especially because yeah. it's so easy to do now um anybody can do it so in order to weed yourself out you have to really find your own voice you have and that voice you have to go with and it has to be incredibly unique to you and it has to be uh you have to be all in on it and you have to work harder than everybody else because it's what it really comes down to at the end of the day is i might not be the best technical rapper or whatever it may be but if i offer something a little bit different than everybody else and i work hard enough i'll stand out and if if you do that long enough consistently enough Cause that's, that's what I've figured out. And I think that's the key. And I I feel like it's the key with anything, uh, is consistency. And I found that in, you know, whatever, whether it's my music career, it's just being consistent and constantly putting out the best stuff that I can and building a trust with my audience to where they know that I'm going to give my best. I'm not going to phone it in. And so you can trust if you buy this shirt, to, to support me that I'm going to continue to, you know what I mean? Put out the best stuff and you're going to continue to enjoy it. So right. you're not like worried. Is this an investment I should be making into this person? You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? And it takes a while to build up that trust and it takes albums and, and lots of songs and lots of videos and lots of different posts and lots of different content to relate with people and build up that consistency. And I found that really in it, like dieting and, exercise all that kind of shit is consistency for me is always the key and it's just consistency over a period of time and my period of time might be different than that guy's period of time but if i just stick to it eventually you know it'll happen so that's kind of been the the thing that i've done is just i've stayed doing it and i've gotten better over time because i've stayed doing it but i guess so yeah to answer your question (laughs) Uh, it's, it's incredibly difficult and I don't like to my own horn for being aware of map, but if, you know, for anybody listening that wants to get into, I, I was so naive when I started this 10 years ago that I thought, you know, it was going to be easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought it would be <laughs> simple. I thought it would be like quick, you know, you get signed by a label, you get picked up, something happens if you're good talent only gets you so far right you know what i mean right, right. there's a lot of there's a there's so many talented people there's yep. so especially with the internet man i can't go on the internet then because i'm just like all these people are fucking better than me you know what i mean <laughs> but the only thing i know is i will outwork every single one of them so i yeah, don't have to worry about that all right fellas you want to help the podcast here is your opportunity you can save 20 percent now and get free shipping on the best below the waist men's grooming products on the market by going to manscape.com m-a-n-s-c-a-p-e-d.com today use code quick that's my nickname not how you use the product and you get 20 percent off free shipping it's a win-win for everyone manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels and now they're available in europe canada and australia and yes i actually use these products i'm getting more shipped right now i got the manscaped bag here got the preserver got the reviver Mm, the reviver the crop mop a whole bag of crop mops and they even give you this so you can actually uh, use manscaped to manscape your eyebrows and your toes huh it's like the best it is everything you need to appeal to your lady friend so don't thank me thank yourself for going to manscape.com entering code quick and getting your order at 20 percent off discount and free shipping yeah and, and with social media and with like uh 
the influencer type uh, kind of age that we're in right now, I think you're very smart in the way that you adapt and you do your verses and raps to like Marvel and UFC and, and, and you, you obviously are trying to get picked up and, 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 and catch some breaks there. Did, did Marvel ever do anything with you or, or did you just do that on your own or cause you did some no, awesome shit with like them. stuff that I think, uh, that's all just stuff I did on my own, man. Like what I've realized started working for me with music was just talking about the shit I liked and yeah. it's genuine. Right. And so I realized it's easy to connect with an audience. If you're being genuine, the, the audience catches on to it. So anything that I've talked about, you know, I've gotten criticized for certain things of, of, you know, making songs about certain things or it being corny or whatever the fuck. And, uh, at the end of the day, it's never, I only make songs about shit that I like or I right. want to. So if I make a song about Marvel, it's cause I think it'd be cool. And I, I'm like, I would like to hear this and nobody's making it. So I'll fucking make it. Yeah. Uh, I love UFC. So they hit me up. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. And I'm able to do that. But the thing is, whenever I, it's none of it's contrived and none of it's forced. It's like, if I, I'll try it. And if, if it works and if I can do justice to these things that I like, I'll put it out. And if not, it's never going to see the light of day. There's a lot of stuff like that. Right. Um, so all those things were just things like, you know, I, you know, if I do like, you know, these nerd raps or if I do like Marvel or DC or just talk about comic books or whatever, I never have like partnered up with anybody to do those. The UFC one, I was able to partner with them, but, um, not the other stuff. It's just things that I've been doing just cause I like to do it. You yeah. know? Yeah. I was just listening to pickle Rick that, that, that blew up pretty big, man on Spotify. Yeah, I never expected that to happen. I was actually listening to that all day today because <laughs> I had you on the show. I think it's catchy, man. I never expected that to take off like it did. Yeah. That was never the intention. I, I like wrote that song. I had really bad writer's block, and I was like, I just want to write about some dumb shit that's just fun. <laughs> that's what works. You know? And yeah, exactly. And the same thing. It's like genuine. It's like, let me just have fun. You know what I mean? Let me not force. Like, I, I didn't think it was more of a writing exercise for me just to try and, you know, let myself, you know, let, let my mind kind of go off on, on a track and just have some fun without feeling like I have to produce or, you know, make something great that's going to go out. And, you know, again, then, then it's just genuine having fun. And I think people catch on to that when they're listening you know yeah absolutely what started this like in the beginning so so you were um like like when did you know that you had the ability to rap and and be good at it and flow and actually possibly have a career in this i guess i got sober when i was 18 and then for a couple of years i would just write a lot and my brother was making beats and he he i stole a couple of beats off his computer just to write to and i was hanging out with a friend of mine i was like yo check this out i kind of wrote this thing and uh, I rapped it, and he was like, yeah, it's actually really, you know, pretty good. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And I had this really shitty computer, so we started recording it on this really bad computer and made these terrible, terrible fucking songs. <laughs> uh, and I was, I started showing it to people around me. And for some, like, I'm just convinced that everybody kind of told me that I wasn't that bad for long enough <laughs> that I actually got good. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it kind of took a while. I was kind of naive in the fact that I always thought that I had something and I could, I could, I knew how to, to rap and I knew how to, you know, put the words together, put cadences together and sentences and all that kind of stuff. It just took me a while to find my voice and then find uh, the way to use my actual voice. But I think I, I did a song called Free Verse and that was the song where I just started, you know, rapping about all the shit that I was into. It was just this random verse that I wrote that was just me having fun. And uh, it kind of blew up online for me. And I was like, all right, so this is what makes sense. You know, when I'm doing what I want, when I'm having fun, when yep. I'm talking about things I like, this this is how I can actually make it work. And that was kind of the, the light bulb moment for me. Even though I had been doing music for years up to that point, that was kind of the moment where I was like, I can do it and I can do it myself. That was kind of the moment. 
Yeah, it's passion, and, and that's what drives it. And and you've done four, right? I, I've listened to four, I think, and they were all great. For, I've done five free verses. You did five? Okay, so I didn't, I didn't see the, five, the fifth one yet. So yeah, I, I'm excited five. now. I got, I, got, I got to go and listen to it after this podcast is over with. <laughs> go listen to the fifth one. <laughs> I got up to go. four. I'm trying to remember if there's some UFC bars in there. There's not. There's one in the song I'm, I'm putting out in like a month. You have some fighting bars in a lot of your a lot of your raps. Yeah, there's a there's an Adesanya bar that I put in this next one that's coming up. I think. Yeah, yeah. He's fighting my uh, he's fighting my one of my one of my podcast guests tomorrow, um, Marvin Vittori. Uh, he's fighting him. Oh, no. So they're fighting each other. Yeah. So so I got him on tomorrow. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. And, and like, so, so as far as collaboration, you're, you're collaborating with some people right now, who are some people that you'd like to collaborate with that you think you might possibly can in the future to, to help pro, uh, progress more? Um, like, in other question. words, like not, not so much like, like dream, uh, people just big, just list big names, but like people that you actually like their style and you, you feel like you would mesh with well and, and put out a good track. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's that's how I've always approached collaborating anyways. I think there's a lot of like, Oh, you want to get a big art artist to do whatever. I've only done songs with people that I actually really enjoy their music. Right. Cause to me, I, I think the song is always the most important. Like song comes before anything, you know? So I don't, I'm not going to send out a song to somebody who they might be popular, but if I'm not into it, yeah. then I, you know, I'll, I've done it. I've gotten verses from people before, and I'm like, yep, yeah, and, and I'll just scrap the whole fucking thing. Because to me, the song is so it's so important for a song to be good. And it's so hard to make a good song that if it gets fucked up, then I, I it's not that, it's more important for to have a good song. So all the collaborations that I've done are either people I respect, I actually listen to, and are friends of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there are certain people, like, I, I've been a fan of, like, Tech 9 forever since I was a kid. So, that collaboration would be, you know, that would be, like, a bucket list thing for me. Uh, I, I'm a huge, you know, obviously, like, an Eminem fan. Uh, NF would be dope. Uh, I'm a big Hobson fan. I think he's great. J. Cole. Uh, Corday. There's, there's so many, like, good people right now. But I, I'm really grateful for the fact that every time this question gets brought up because it does a lot it's just like at the end of the day it's like i make music with my friends i don't really care right, you know right. what i mean which, which is a nice thing to like be in that space especially yeah. with music where it's like you know i'd love to do a song with all these people but at the end of the day it's like i get to kind of just make music with my with the people i want to make music with you yeah. know collaborating can be like a weird thing because people's creative processes are so different you know what i mean across the board yeah but uh, there's like there's people that i would you know like atmosphere tech nine those are like my my top two because those are people i grew up listening to and like eminem of course, of course shit yeah. like that um i was gonna ask you so you were saying you always come out to ambitions as a writer yeah every ufc fight i mean tupac was like tupac's my number one yeah i I'll, Hey, ever that's like the first i remember when i i remember the first tupac song i ever heard yeah you know what i mean like i remember the impact that it had on me um so was that like was tupac in general a big thing or was it just where you were at in the in the certain uh gym you were in they were listening to a lot of it was it just that song in particular or his whole catalog or what was it? It hit me, man, because like, so, so I grew up in Texas and I'm I'm in Texas and, and rap wasn't big in Texas, you know? And so definitely the percentage of rap compared to country music was like, you know, like 1%. And so I trained at a gym called main street gym down, downtown uh, Houston. And a lot of big guys, uh, Frank Tate, Thomas Tate, Reggie Johnson, uh, Holyfield would come in at, before his fights from Atlanta uh, back before. Um, and, and so what would happen is I would come in the gym and get, just get my ass kicked by all these guys that were boxers because I wasn't a boxer because I didn't have to go to a boxing gym. Back in those days, I'd have to go to a boxing gym, a kickboxing gym, a BJJ gym. There wasn't gyms that had everything, right? Um, so I'd go to this gym and it was just super cool because like that was the one, like you can go to a Taekwondo gym where I started. 
there's no success stories there, right? There's no success stories really at a kickboxing gym. But when you go to a, a legit boxing gym and you see like Reggie Johnson pull up in like a brand new SUV and like brand new rims and like he's getting the star treatment, then you start thinking like, damn, I want to be like that guy. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to stroll up to a gym and have that kind of like entrance, you know, where people are like, damn, that dude is, there's, 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 there's an entourage around him. And like, he's got a, a rap man and he's got like a tape man. And he's got like a, you know, all the coach and all this stuff. And so I was just getting the shit kicked out of me and, and watching all this stuff. And, and, and Tupac was always what they played. But for whatever reason, it wasn't just that. It was just that it, uh, it hit me, you know, like, like Tupac was, you know, I said this recently about MGK as well um, in, a, in a past blog I did an eight years ago, actually. Um, um, but uh, I find inspiration in a lot of rappers and because a lot of rappers are real and, you know, knowing that Tupac came up how he did and through his music and what he accomplished, it had nothing to do with me. His life was completely different than my life, but I respected what he did. You know, he, he took what he was given and he made the most of it. And, 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 he, and, he, and he was self-made, you know, and I, I thought it was super inspiring and, and it just hit me hard. And then the fact, that mixed with the fact that I was at my bare bones beginning at that stage. Um, when I got into the UFC, I was kind of at the top, kind of like in the in my dream venue and my dream organization, fighting in front of millions of people and pay-per-view and stuff. When I listened to that music, it brought me back to that gym when I was just dreaming of like driving up in an SUV as Reggie so, Johnson or Frank Tate or Thomas Tate, you know what I'm saying? So, so like, it was like, that's what I dreamed of is like to be able to be in the UFC and to be in a big show and to, to walk into an arena and people say, Hey, that's, that's Mike Swick. And he's a good fighter. You know, he, he's this and that or whatever, you know? So I would always like listen to that music, uh, backstage. And then when I walked out, because it brought me back to that moment and kind of reversed my career back to the beginning and humbled me to the point of like, remembering where I came from and, and appreciating where I came from and enjoying that moment of where I'm at and making the most of it because I never thought I'd get there. You know what I mean? So it was like one of those kind of situations. Reignite the hunger. Yeah, that's what it was, man. That's what it was. And it was a perfect person to do it because I mean, like the, the, it was no coincidence. They were listening to Tupac every day. I mean, he's a, he's a motivational, inspirational guy, you know, and, and he motivated everybody. And so it was, a, it was a good pick. And, uh, yeah, man, it that's worked. Really interesting, man. I mean, that's really cool because I think there's this idea of especially like certain types of rap music, right? Like Tupac, for instance, uh, some people, you know, will be like, oh, Tupac's a poet. And some people will be like, you know, later, right. you know, all he does is talk about money and bitches and whatever the fuck. <laughs> yeah. But it's like that is the inspiration. You know what I mean? Because if you do look at where that, that guy came from, the fact that he can talk about all this shit is like if you're listening to it from his point of view, yeah, it, it comes across, it's a completely different message. You know what I mean? If you just understand where it's coming from and that, you know, that's just cool to hear. Like, cause that totally makes sense to me. Well, yeah. I grew up not judging people, man, because like, I don't know why this got instilled in me young, but it's like, I don't judge people because you don't know where people's been and where they came from. And like Tupac for people that judge Tupac for this or that or the other, or anybody for that matter, they don't know where they came from. Like the, these individuals come from lives that you can't understand. You, you've never been in these people's lives. You, you, you don't know how hard it was to grow up where they grew up at, you know? So for them to come out, yeah, you can say, oh, he used to be a drug dealer or he used to do this or he used to do that. He fucking survived, you know? He, 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 he took where he was at and progressed himself from there to, to stardom and success, whoever it is, 50 Cent, Tupac, Eminem, yeah. whatever. So it's like, you know, yeah, it, it, it's just, you know, you can't judge people, man, until you know their story. And, you, and you, usually you don't know their story. You know, usually you don't know everyone's full story. So I try not to judge people as much as I can and just take inspiration because that's what's going to help me. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to be negative anyway. It doesn't help anything. So I take right. the positive and leave the negative and, and don't worry about it. <laughs> that's my, that's my, uh, the internet sometimes, man. And you know, like I, I have worst. a lot of, you know, cause I'm the same way. Like I don't talk about the shit I don't like. Like I don't waste time talking about things. You know what I mean? If someone's ever like, yo, what's your least favorite blog? I'm like, why the fuck would I have that off the top of my head? Like, why would I have a list of my least favorite X, Y, or Z? You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't know. Because I don't think about that shit. I'll tell you what my favorite things are. Because right. what's the point in thinking? You know what I mean? Like, 
there's just a mindset now or even with with the internet of like one sentence is like who you are and yeah. that's who we're going to judge you as when, when you have a, a entire lifespan of experiences and, and things you've done and you know all this kind of stuff and people are just it's so quick to judge and it's so easy for people to just judge you put you in a box and say you know this is you you can't sum up a human being in a sentence or you know what i mean you can barely sum up a human being in, in a book right. you know what i mean there's just so many facets to somebody and you don't understand why somebody acts the way they act until unless you know their entire story yeah i mean there's probably a good reason for a lot of those things but i I mean i agree with you it's just it's it's it feels like it gets more tough with you know the more people go into the internet and live their lives on the internet yeah to where it's just too to judge and, and too often people get judged too quickly you know what i mean I don't let it get to me. I'm, I'm sure I mean, maybe it's happened to you. I, I don't know. But for me, um, you know, I feel like I, I was mostly a favorite. Like I ha- had a big fan base or whatever or a good following. But like I definitely had hate, you know, and it's like the negativity. It's like I don't care. Like I, 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 would, I would blow it off because it's like if you're going to be negative, but you're not going to be at my funeral, I don't care. Like I really don't care. Like the people that's at my funeral – I want them to be positive about me and have positive feelings and like think that I did good in this world or whatever. But if you're not going to be there and you're negative, I really just don't care. Like you're not ever going to be a part of my life. You're never going to be a thought. So to me, it's like, it doesn't matter. So I just, I I learned early to just wipe that shit out of my head and not let those guys drag me down because in the beginning of my career, um, it was a mind fuck because like I, I kind of got wrapped up into it a little bit, you know, and, and I started listening to people. It was my first taste of listening to people outside of my friends and my close proximity people that I know that, that could actually talk strong to me in a negative way that wouldn't do it in my face because they're my friend or my family, whatever the case. And so I was like hurt, you know, and I was just like, and then, then I started thinking about it. I'm like, dude, this is not going to help me do anything. This is only going to bring me down. So I, I got to get rid of that shit. So I fucking, I boxed that up and threw it out. That's interesting. Uh, especially because, you know, in the fighting game or is the UFC family or just the fighting fan base is incredibly opinionated and a very just strong, strongly opinionated fan base right. one way or the other. Right? Absolutely. Um, and if you're a fighter, you you have you have to have thick skin, yes, big time. <laughs> and yes. it's it's that's another very close correlation to to the music industry, especially more more especially the hip hop community. And I got my first taste of that in a big way when I did the UFC song, because there I'm hitting you know the UFC fan base, which is as I just said, a very yeah. strongly opinionated fan yeah. base and the hip hop <laughs> community. And so that was my first taste of like what's happening because it was such, it's weird too. Cause they were supposed to post that video like three times. Right. But, uh, I forget did, did Holloway drop out of that fight last minute? I can't remember. Or, I just Holloway remember Daniel Cormier knocked out Stipe. That was, that was the only thing I remember <laughs> the, whole, the whole show. Two things, because I was at that fight. They they let, they like gave me tickets to the fight. I remember that because that shit was amazing. Yeah. And I also remember that uh, the Derek Lewis, yeah, uh, Francis Ganu fight was terrible. Yeah. Yep. And Mike Perry knocked yep. out Paul Felder. Yeah, I remember I that remember one too. I doing the wave in the fucking yeah uh, <laughs> because nothing was happening during that fight. Yeah, but uh, so when when I did that song when they when they posted it, it was like I went up like ten thousand followers, and I had all these messages from people that were like, "Yo, that's awesome!" But I'm looking in the comments, and it's just me getting shit on by like Damn. thousands of people, and it was the first time where I had this weird like, you know, I feel like people hate me because you weren't a but, fighter or what? They're saying you're not a fighter or something. You don't you don't know what you're talking about? Is that what they were saying? Oh, no, it was more like this is a fucking it, – it's it's always, you know, the white rapper effect of like, oh, this is a fucking knockoff of X, Y, or Z or oh, this dude's trash or garbage, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. So it's like all these trolls, and I'm like, yo, this what? 
but I'm getting all these followers and all this love, but it feels like everybody hates me. What is happening? You know what I mean? It was just this weird mind fuck of feeling like everybody hates me, but the results show that I'm doing something right. So I, I don't, I don't know what's happening. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, a, a, a weird turn to where I was like, all right, I need to figure out how to deal with this, you know, and see what it is. Because it is, the, the more popular you get, you can almost gauge by how many people hate you. <laughs> yeah. up, yeah. You know what I mean? But that's that's kind of the way it is. And it's like the more hate you're getting, the bigger you're getting. But you just have to be able to set one completely aside and not let it affect you. And that's that can be difficult in the beginning. Well, real recognizes real, man. And I tell you what, I followed you. So I, I saw your 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 intro and I was like, dude, that, that guy's going to be big, man. Because I saw wh where you were at that time or whatever. And I was like, this dude's going to be big, man. So I followed you and been following you ever since then. What's up, everybody? I am here in Thailand. This is the first time I've ever been here. Been dying to come here for years. Mike Swick, he's one of the big reasons he's been trying to pull me down here. What he built down here, AKA Thailand, is incredible. There's people here from all over the world. You can train mixed martial arts here, jujitsu. They have weightlifting, they have cardio, and obviously they have Muay Thai, boxing, everything. telling you guys I know everybody wants to go to Thailand because Thailand's so cool but you can't come to Thailand without coming to aka Thailand come on real quick just uh your opinion since you're in the the rap business uh obviously uh Eminem oh, versus yeah. MGK when they when they had their little battle what was your take on that? And what is your take on just, you, know, you don't have to pick a favor or anything. Obviously, Eminem is, to me, the GOAT. But um, what, what is your take on MGK and, and Eminem just individually as rappers? Like, uh, what do you think of them and their styles? Okay, so the beef, to me, I've said a thousand times, is like, um, I don't get, like, I've never been one to get like drawn into rap beef because i've always been like you know at the end of the day these are two people that i don't fucking know yeah. you know what i mean that, that are you know talking shit about each other as far as like who won like i've said this every time it's like i think we won because we got like three dope ass songs yeah at the end of the day, and that's that's all i give a fuck about yeah 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 it's uh you know what I mean? Eminem had better bars on his, but in my opinion, MGK's had much better replay value because that rap devil track to me was hard as fuck. Yeah. You know, I had a hook and the beat and it was like, I can listen to this like 10 times in a row. Whereas the Eminem ones is like, I can only listen to this a few times. There's so many bars. It's just like, I can't like chill and listen to this. <laughs> um, but that's, I mean, to me, Eminem growing up, like those first three albums, I don't. Insane. It's it's hard to find another artist that had you know three albums in a row their their first three that were that iconic and amazing and classic to drop three classic albums in a row is pretty fucking crazy. I still listen to him today, like, like when I'm working out, like he, on my rap track, uh, a lot of it's Eminem and do his early shit is is insane. It's it's ingenious. It's fucking insane. Like it's unbelievable yeah. that a man can be that smart and rap that good. Like it really is. Like he he yeah. he really is the best I've ever heard. Yeah, he's incredible. Uh, as far as MGK, like I was never a huge fan of MGK when he was rapping. Like I always respected it and I liked it. It was just not really my taste. Um, like there were certain songs like I liked the uh, what bad bad things or whatever. Mm -hmm. Bad things and he had he had a couple like singles that were dope that I really liked. But as far as like catalog wise it just wasn't really like my style but his new shit the pop punk music yeah. i was like he found his groove i think that shit's fucking incredible i yeah. think he dropped his album and like i listened to the first song and i was like this is a classic record i can tell like already this song is like an inst this album is like an instant classic and like that shit made me a like actual like mgk fan i'm like yeah. i actually listened to that 
on my own. You know, I mean, whereas I just never really did that with uh, his rap music, just because I just it just wasn't really my thing. Like it was good, but it wasn't my style that I was into. Right, right. But his new shit is 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 totally my style, and and I fuck with it heavy. Which like that's something that I think is important too. Is like understanding that if something if I don't like something, it doesn't mean it's trash. It's just not for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I don't like this, but everybody else, it's like, I can't say this is not good because it absolutely is good. Yeah. But I just, it's just not my shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think what he's doing now is fucking incredible, man. I think it's, he found his bag. And it's funny, it's people like fucking Eminem chased MGK out of hip hop. And it's like, I don't think that's the case, man. Mm-hmm. I think the dude found, found his, his way. sound that he and that he naturally gravitates to and it was different and it's unique and he did it well and that's awesome you know and and, and since it relates so close to fighting as well and you're in this business being a rapper um it seems like people are shitting on eminem now and and obviously like snoop dogg came out and said what he said and they had beef and all that and and a few other rappers came out and kind of shit on him too it it seems like when you get to, to be the best for so long eventually they break you down. And, and what is your take on that? Like, like, how do you feel just in general knowing how great Eminem is and then just seeing these people just turn on him like that? Like, like, just like, like treat him as if like, dude, he's the great, he, he was the greatest hip hop or hip hop uh, selling artist of all time. Like you, you can't deny the stats and the numbers. Like, like you got to give him credit for that. Like, why are you turning your back on him now? Like why, why is Snoop Dogg all of a sudden is, as much shit as he's got going on? He doesn't need the publicity. Why is he, why is he doing this? You know, like why, why are they doing this? I don't know. It, it's weird. Even on like Twitter, which Twitter is so fucking toxic, but yeah, <laughs> it's like a hot take. It's like a hot take to be like Eminem sucks. Yeah. And even like younger, younger kids will say, and it's just like to have, to have this like hot take that, that people are going to like, get off like it's almost cool to be like like eminem's garbage or whatever the fuck and i i can't explain that shit i have no fucking clue where that comes from and what that maybe it's because of his age maybe it's because he's been doing it for so long that new kids are just like you know that's almost like their parents' fucking music, you know what I mean? At this but it's point. like Snoop so, Dogg. They're like friends, you know. It's like why is he? <laughs> it's like why I mean, is that's he... weird on its own? But I, yeah, that is like, yeah, I, I, I have no fucking clue because it doesn't make any sense. Because the you know, and there's even artists. It's just it's obvious his impact that he's had on on the hip hop community. Uh, and, well, not even the hip hop community, but just on music as a whole. Uh, so to try to deny that, you know, is, is pretty crazy, but I think like, you know, Snoop Dogg saying that Eminem's not in his top 10 wasn't necessarily like a diss. I think it was like the shit that he said after, then he like said some disrespectful shit, which was weird, but like not having Eminem in your top 10 of all time is like, you know, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. You know what I mean? Again, it's like whatever your taste is, you know what I mean? I'm sure Everybody's Snoop Dogg's different. taste is probably not Eminem, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sure Snoop Dogg, you know, grew up listening to a bunch of different shit. But uh the the weird hot takes and just like, you know, we're trying to cancel Eminem now or whatever the fuck, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's is, what I'm saying. Is, it's weird. I can't explain it. I wish I could. It, it sucks because no people sense. don't people don't realize that, but it's like we you know, I say we because me as a fighter, you as a rapper and and being in entertainment we work so hard to get successful and to be big and to accomplish our dreams and our goals. But the end game of that is if you don't stay on top and you can't maintain that, you're going to get broken down. Like it happens to actors. It happens to musicians. It happens to fighters the most. It happens to it. So it's, it's a tough gig, man. It's a tough gig. You gotta, you you gotta hustle to get there and you gotta hustle to stay there. And, and, and that's why I respect everybody in in this business because like, you know, you, you got to have that fight in you and it's got to stay there till the end, you know? Yeah, it's almost like once you get to, you have to hustle harder to stay there than you do to get there. Yeah, yeah. You know? And, you know, with fighting, it's like there is, there's literally a physical, there's there's a clock, there is a time. Yep. You know what I mean? And in in music as a whole, there's not, 
but in hip hop there is right because there's a certain point you can age out almost of of hip hop yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean not completely but to where your audience definitely changes and you're you're not going to be moving the needle you know what i mean uh on a lot of things as an older hip hop artist you know what i mean which we've seen as kind of like a young artist game it's kind of the way it is uh as, you know for emerging artists at least so it's like a fight against the clock, but also just a fight to stay there and stay relevant and keep doing good things. And yeah, it's people don't understand what it takes. And that's why the people hating and talking shit are the people who haven't done anything. Yeah. This is easy to talk shit from your couch when you've never accomplished anything in your life and you've never, you don't know what it's like to, to have to really, you know, push yourself and, and figure things out on your own and, problem solving and all the nuances that come with not just because being a fighter is the same thing i'm assuming it, like you own a small business you know what i mean like you are a brand you you merchandise you now you know you have a podcast you you know what i mean there's like you start your own gym you, all these other things and it's like as an artist you same thing you do merch you, you know you can start Record your own label, podcast thing yeah. or whatever these different things that you have to do to build something from the ground and then somebody who, you know, has only clocked in for somebody else their entire life can try and judge you and criticize you for, for what you've done. And they think that the, the idea of that is so mind blowing to me. I've never, I can never try and criticize somebody if I haven't done, if I can't do what they do. And I, I've not, I can watch a fight and be like, you know, I like this fighter. I like that fighter. But I'm I, to try and for me to try and technically critique somebody when I've yeah. never stepped into a ring is the most fucking crazy thing ever. <laughs> yeah. And it's the yeah. same thing as somebody who's never made a song trying to be like, oh, you should do this. Like, no, nah, motherfucker. Like, you don't know what I should <laughs> do. You don't know what you, you don't. You, you're not a professional. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And. I would imagine in fighting it's kind of the same thing because everybody thinks they know what should happen in a fight and what a fighter should do. And they'll be calling in and critiquing. It's like, dude, you've never been in a fight, period. Like, what are you even talking about? Yeah. So there's a lot of, a lot of that stuff, but yeah, I, I feel that. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And I, I'm going to say there's just two guys – that, that I've followed on, on Instagram or whatever that I've always like knew was going to make it huge. And not only would I look at their posts, but when I'd see their posts or I'd see a good post, I would always go to their account to see how many followers they increased because I knew it was going to keep increasing more and more and more and more. And I was going to watch their stock just rise to the top. And the first one was MGK back. If you, if you look at YouTube and, and type in a vlog, one of the vlogs I did back like nine years ago, I talked about MGK and how he was coming up and I thought he was going to be big, blah, 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 blah. And you're the only other one. You're the only other one that I, that I follow. And I, I constantly look at your account and look at your progression because dude, I just, I just have, I just not, it's not a feeling. I just know you're going to be big, man. And it's like, it's been an honor to have you on the podcast to sit down and talk to you. And you know, I have a lot of respect for you. It, we're in kind of similar situations as far as the grind and, and, and how we work to get to where we are, you know, to the level of success that we've obtained and where we're going to obtain or whatever. Um, and it's just, uh, it's an honor to, to, to have a podcast with you, man. And like, uh, I really think you're going to do big things and, uh, it was good to be able to have you on the show and, and, and be one of the, the first podcast, to, to, to have you on here and, uh, and capture this. I appreciate it a lot, man, and, and the respect goes both ways, man. I, I I love what you're doing and what you've done, and you know it's it's really awesome for me to be here. I'm just you know glad glad to do it, and I, I just think it's great, man. And I want to get out to Thailand, man. I've been trying. Dude, you're invited, man. I got a, a great place here, man. So whenever you want to come out, hit me up, and uh, dude, I'll show you the best time of your life, bro. It is it is literally one of the best places in the world. So we'll take the boat. We'll we'll go to the islands. I've heard from so many, like, I was saying my homie John, Johnny Nunez, he's out there. Yep. He goes out he there. Came, he came to AK Thailand, my gym. He came to my gym with uh, Misha Tape. Yeah, they fucking love it out there. My my other buddy, Mike, he goes out there and trains, uh, loves it. 
I think he's going to move out there. Yeah, a lot it's of like, people do. I've been so many places. I've been to like, dude, I've been to Africa, all over Africa. I've been to all over Central America, but I haven't been to Thailand yet. So that's that's on the bucket list. Well, I'm going to stay in touch with you, man. And, and the second that you have time to come, I'll make it worth your while, bro. We'll have a great time. Trust me. Hey, I'm, I'm totally in. I'll take you up on that for sure. Well, thank you so much, man. Good luck with your career. I'm going to be following it. Uh, I follow you all the time, like all your posts. I uh, love your music. Uh, I, I follow you on everything, Spotify, YouTube, uh, Instagram, everything. So uh, I'll be continuing to follow you. And hopefully I'll have you back on eventually again. And uh, you'll never get too big to, to come back to my show and, and, uh, no, and man, give me an time, update. Dude. Time. <laughs> time. I appreciate it a lot, man. Thank you. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely, man. I'll see you soon.